Hello and welcome. I was given for Christmas a book called Spirit of Cricket. It's by former England cricket captain Mike Brearley. And it's much more than a typical sports book of anecdotes and unreliable memories. Brearley had a reputation uh, as the most cerebral of cricketers and went on after retirement to study and practice as a psychoanalyst. His book thoughtfully considers issues of wider concern, including the hot topic of the distinction between laws and guidelines. As in cricket, so in life, we might well say. Well, before I get lost in matters of cricket, let's have this week's collect. So let's pray. Eternal Lord, our beginning and our end, bring with us bring us with the whole creation to your glory hidden through past ages and made known in jesus christ our lord amen even for those who have no interest in the game terms like the spirit of cricket or that's not cricket are recognizably part of the english language cricket is supposed to stand for fair play decency and respect. The very fact that cricketers' indiscretions are so newsworthy suggests how much we still expect standards of fair play to be maintained in the game. When Australian players damage the cricket ball with sandpaper and hit the sandpaper in their trousers, it violated both law and spirit. The outrage afforded by that action suggests the public expects the spirit of cricket to be kept alive. Another former England captain, Mike Atherton, called the spirit of cricket meaningless guff. He did have a worthwhile point, because the spirit of cricket can often be invoked against anyone who tries to change anything or do anything innovative or different. It's a way of preventing the game from evolving. And for cricket, with its history based in a class system that separated so-called gentlemen from players, this would be disastrous. He also pointed out that the spirit of cricket means different things to different people at different times in different parts of the world. To play the game fairly, you need clear rules if there is to be any consistency across the world. However, as Brearley points out and Atherton subsequently agreed, you can never legislate for everything. To meet every situation, you would need a law book that weighed half a tonne. A fixation with rules produces narrow-mindedness and rigid thinking, with innovation limited to attempts to get round the rules or to avoid getting caught. Playing in the spirit of the game should give space for motivation, innovation and creativity, as well as a sense of how far you should go. Without it, all the attention goes on to policing, which is to nobody's benefit. So spirit and law are both necessary in cricket and in life. Question is how to make them effective in working together, how to avoid the lack of clarity that comes from a mix of rules and recommendations. How truly to get the best of both worlds. What would Jesus say? Well, curiously, Mike Brearley quotes Jesus several times. People who think religion is all about keeping rules would assume that Jesus is would stand on the rules, whilst many of those who've read the Gospels might well identify the rules focus with the Pharisees, those who oppose Jesus. If we take, for example, the debate over keeping the Sabbath laws, Jesus concludes, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. That's Mark 2.23. Surely he supports the spirit rather than the law. On the other hand, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. 
I've not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them until heaven and earth disappear. Not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of the pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. That's Matthew 5, 17 and 18. Mike Brearley explains fulfilling the law is filling it out, maximizing understanding, recognizing all its implications. So Jesus takes the law, you shall not commit murder, and says, well, don't get angry either, because one thing will lead to another. That's not to spiritualize or internalize the law, as is sometimes said, but it rec it's re about recognizing its full implications. So that your thoughts, your actions, your intentions are all united together in one. Here we surely have the best relationship between spirit and law. We need both. We need to understand the reasons behind laws. We need to be motivated to do the right thing. Sometimes we do need to question particular laws or question how they are applied. Sometimes we need to be ready to go beyond the letter in order to achieve what is truly of benefit. It ought to be possible in life, even if it's asking a bit much in cricket. pray and let us pray for our lawmakers for members of parliament and members of the house of lords for diligence and fair-mindedness in all their deliberations a true balance between law and freedom pray for all who at this time live with the pressure of responsibility for cons constant decision making and we pray for those who apply the law, the judges, magistrates and the legal profession. And for the court system that's under severe pressure at this time. We pray for the police, prison and probation services. 
and for recognition of the needs of both perpetrators and victims of crime. God of righteousness, hear our prayer for the, li the life of our country. Bless the Queen and all those in positions of authority. And bless the people. Rule their hearts and encourage their endeavours for good. Help us to seek service before privilege, public prosperity before private gain and the honour of your name before the popularity of our own. Give us liberty, peace and joy, and bind us in service to the community and in loyalty to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.